Hello from the snowy, wintry Michigan woods. We actually don't have a lot of snow, just a dusting, a couple of inches. But I've been walking in the woods lately, and I haven't, I've purposely not been taking my camera or my phone, just so that I would walk and concentrate on being quiet and still. But today, it's the last day that I'm going to be able to walk for a while. Tomorrow starts the firearms deer season here in our part of the state. And I have nothing against hunting. We're hunters. We have someone who hunts the property for us so that we have some venison in the freezer. But it's also not safe to just go tromping around the woods, even a woods that you own, even wearing bright orange. It just doesn't matter. So this will be my last tromp through the woods. And I did th think that I would bring you along with me. Don't know how long I'll be able to record. It's cold. I don't know how long the battery will last. And I don't know how much memory I have on the phone. But anyway, here I am wearing my woolens. And underneath, yeah, just pull the hem out, is my Kara sweater in the new Tiedon yarn. It's like a warm undergarment, a warm tunic, you know, to keep my core warm when I'm walking. And it does that and it's lightweight and doesn't bottle things up. This shawl is one that I knit and I don't know if I've ever shown it on the podcast. Did it quite a long time ago. It's out of hand spun from our own fleece, our own flock. And it has a little bit of special fiber in it. Uh, when my grandson was little and helped me a lot on the farm, one day going for a walk and looking at the milkweed fluff blowing around, he took hold of it and thought it was so silky. And he said, Grandma, could you spin this? And so there's just like a little handful of milkweed fibers in here. And every once in a while, I'll see a little bit of it. I'm reminded of that time. So I tried to pick a spot where you would see pretty things behind you or behind us. I just, uh, scared up three deer when I came in on this path and there had been a red-tailed hawk going over. How many of you that watched my last podcast stayed all the way to the end and heard the red-tailed hawk in the background? I tried to get him on camera and if you looked really close you might see it but um, oh and there goes a squirrel. Probably be able to hear him pretty soon. So that's what's happening here today. There's a little bit that I, something happened on my last walk just a couple of nights ago that really moved me. And I might share it with you, I might not, I'm not sure. I might record it and then decide if it's too private or too personal. But um, it's just really stuck with me. I haven't been able to shake it, so we'll see. That was my thought that I might share about that when I walked out here today. Thought about bring, bringing knitting, but I thought, well, that will look too staged and I can't stay really long. It's starting to fall a little bit of snow, but probably you can't see it. So I think I'll get up and move to a different spot. So I hope you'll come along with me. I thought I'd stop just for a minute and see if you can see I'm almost to a clearing. And back here is the roundhouse in the big barn. I just thought you might be interested to see that. This is the trail that I'm taking up through the woods. I'm looking for a particular tree to show you guys. Not quite there yet. So let's keep walking. Here they are. These are the two trees I was looking for. I can't remember if I've showed them on the podcast before, taken pictures of them. They're starting to decline. Two of the biggest trees, I just called them Bill's tree. This one, it wouldn't have had any value as lumber, but it was the almost the biggest tree in the forest. It certainly had the longest limbs, but with those long limbs comes a lot of weight. And you can see they're starting to come down. Let's walk over that way. I'm going to turn the camera around and 
point it at the trees and show you a little bit about this spot in the woods. You might be able to see it's getting colder. I can start to see my breath now. So I'm going to pause and be right back. Under that tree that I was sharing with you just a minute ago. And you can see some of these branches that have started to come down. And this is a red oak. And just as Bill said, he knows where every one of these trees are, even from his bed. He said just to the west of that is a little clump of young white oak. And there they are. Just to the west of the trail, just like he said. The other big tree right there. I had in my mind that this was just about the center of the woods, but Bill said not. It's a little north of the center. And he would know. I'm going to try to pan over. I, I know it still won't give you a total grasp of how long th these branches are. It goes out and out and then up. There's another really big one here. There had been an even bigger one over here, but that started to come down. Maybe you can see the snow starting to come down now. And there are some birch trees back here. Buck rub over here. And another little knoll. And the farmhouse is off in the distance. And the beech trees still holding onto their leaves. I'm going to be ready for some nice hot vegetable soup when I get back to the house. Yeah, somebody's sighting in their rifle. <laughs> 